Okay, so welcome. In this video, we are going to do some basic tutorial on how to uh, process uh, and interpret um, VLFEM data. VLF is the very low frequency electromagnetic geophysical survey data. Uh, VLFEM uh, makes use of uh, powerful uh, radio transmitters used in communicating with submarines. And the equipment or the instrument used for gathering data for the VLF um, uh, um, survey is a radio receiver that will receive these uh, frequencies in the 20,000 kilo, kilohertz range. And so uh, what we're going to do first is to uh, get the program and um, this program uh, that is used is called the Caros H gel filter uh, or Caros H gel Fraser filter. It is used for filtering of VLF measurements. So I've got my data here, and um, this is the data. I'm going to open that up and um, to see how the data is. Meanwhile, I'm going to extract this here so that um, because that's where the the files for the filtering is housed so and once we open that uh, you see this set of files that are here what i would urge you to read the uh, the text file here and this manual to increase your knowledge on the application on the use of this particular software and um, uh, let's just open up this to explain some of the uh, the things that are used here. We're using because whenever you open the whenever you run that Excel file, it will prompt you to actually select a data file that is going to be used. And then let's just select it for explanation purposes. And that is that. So. And uh, when you click on file, you see all these, the read, VLF, and all that. We are not going to be using that in this particular um, uh, tutorial. So this shows your raw data uh, plotted. And this shows the Fraser uh, filter plotted, especially the real component. The real component is just that um, uh, most um, uh, uh, VLF... Uh, VLF survey, they actually measure uh, the two orthogonal components of the magnetic field, which are normally the tilt angle and the ellipticity of the vertical polarization ellipse. And so, uh, but um, the real, uh, also known as the in phase component, and the imaginary, also known as the quadrature component, are related to the tilt angle and the ellipticity. Uh, for example, if you, if you know the tilt angle because the instrument actually measures this tilt angle, uh, you can use the tan of that particular angle multiplied by 100% to get your real component. And of course, uh, for the quadrature, there are some other mathematical uh, uh, things that are used once you know the ellipticity of the that is recorded during the survey or well, we're not going to go into that the most important thing is that we have our data and we're going to use this data for simple basic interpretation of vlf em um, data so this uh, shows the you the real component and this shows the pseudo section of the um the filtered um, of the filter data so the spacing here is actually the the distance the interstitial distances uh, for our data if we look closely at our data that we have here we'll see that our interstitial distances are 10 meters apart and of course this particular software uh, uses a very constant interstitial distances so for you to use this your distances 
must be constant. And now it says the maximum depth. The maximum depth, uh, the, the, this VLF doesn't really work once the depth is beyond a hundred meters. So it's actually used to map a very shallow conductive media. Um, the skin depth is used to factor in the effect of attenuation of the VLF frequencies. Uh, in this particular um, tutorial, we're not going to be using that, uh, but it just factors in the, the attenuation due to the, um, the frequencies that is used. So, and um, this update parameter, whenever anything is changed here, you're going to click on this update parameter. For example, if this were to be 1010, I will click on the update parameters, everything here changes. And it's important to note that for us to use this software, we have to format our data in a particular format that this particular program understands. So we're going to be doing that in just a moment. And the maximum Z level and the minimum Z level are just used to scale the contour values in the KH filtered pseudo section. The reverse sign here is you are used to reverse the signs of the of the EM or the VLF data component. And uh, it's to be noted that um, the signs don't really matter. But for convention, we use the, the code for non-conductive media and the red for high conductive medium. So, and that is how it is. So we are going to work on the the file structure now so that uh, whenever we are inputting our data, our data should be such that um, it will be in the format that this particular program understands. So if we look at this um, uh, data file that came with the program, line one says that um, it's synthetic VLF data. In our own case, we'll just change this to uh, VLF EM tutorial so so that we have it that way and then uh, this two and three and four rather is used for comments and this is just um, just a tutorial you know just for anybody reading your data file to know whatever you're saying just for comments and nothing else so like for here you can make a comment okay let's get here just uh, let's just name yeah, so put it that way and enjoy ourselves a tutorial for basic understanding of kh filtering of vlf data so this is just uh a note and then this 30 represents the number of data points you have in your survey data and uh, let's look at this uh, file here we are using the 23.4 kilohertz uh, band because the instrument syntrex that was used actually measured it in three different frequency bands but we are for the purpose of this uh, tutorial we are using the 23.4 frequency band so we take the station numbers you can see here we have uh, 51 of them from 0 to 500 so we need to copy that and uh, come here and uh, create new and paste it here and for us to actually uh, take it to that place to format that data file we need to put this in column mode so we press ctrl shift and alternate keys and select this data once you've selected you copy go back here and uh, click on this place put it in column mode by selecting control alternate and uh, shift buttons and you paste so this is actually the number of data points from 0 to 500 then this is so we change this now to 51 so we have 51 data points and now this two uh, indicates that the column 2 is used uh, for 
the real component. So we can make a comment here, column two is the in phase, in phase data. So whenever anybody reading your this uh, particular program or your data file will know what is there. So we have column two as our in phase data. So we copy that. We copy that. We we'll go to this place and then we click on this place here. Okay, no, first and foremost, sorry, we'll hit delete and um, paste our data. For us to copy it, we'll still use the column mode copying by pressing Control, Shift, and alternate buttons and um, select all these guys here. All right, we copy and go back here. Do the same for here, Control, alternate, and Shift and select all these guys down to where we're going to have our data and uh, we paste so this actually has pasted these values where they should be so if you want to format this but there is no problem this is the particular column that is here all these are not necessary because our program is not going to read from these other columns it's just going to read from column two only so we need to save it so we need to save it so we save this save as and we go to where our data is okay and now this one will be lab one lab one for the vlf and remember to save it in the dot dat format Okay, no need to go through all this. Just uh, click dot d eighty. All right, so we save that. So we now have that. So we can now close this up. So we have our data formatted in a way that is acceptable by the system. So let's go back here. Let's go back here and um, click on this. We're still going to be using the so we are using uh oh where did our file go? We saved it as well now. Oh, well, I did this. So we open this up and um, to prompt us to go to this place. Where do we have it? We have it in the lab 01. Okay, we have it in VLF, we have that there, and this is lab 01. So we open that up. So this is the plot of the data. The raw data has been plotted. And now this is the Fraser plotted data. And then this is the, the contour. And uh, this is real component and it is unnormalized. Remember, this spacing here is um, uh, uh, 10 meters. The maximum depth here, we placed it at 60. But if you want us to go to 100, we can drive it there and we update parameters. But that is so unnecessary. You can see it is uh, pixelating here. So, and even automatically, it um, prompted us to stop at 80. But 60 is just a good depth to, to go to. Like I said, this is unnormalized. We are keeping all these things constant. We don't want to change them because it doesn't, uh, it's not going to make any difference. And like I said, the red components here, uh, where you have your conductive media, 
while these other places are not very conductive. So whenever you want to do your prospecting, these particular places are targeted for your prospecting either for ores or for groundwater. And if you want to play around with it and make this 10 meters for the skin depth and update parameters, you see a lot of things are changing here. It's now say a real component skin depth is at 10 meters, but we don't want to do that. So we just update our parameters to read such. So after doing that, you can now copy this and place it wherever you will want it to be. And that ends the tutorial. Thank you.